Hi and welcome back. So I finally found the time to actually do this. I am so sorry for the delayed update. It's because I was really really busy with Bailey because we have been in and out of the vet. Not to mention I was quite emotional <laughs> and uh, I think there's enough room for maybe just one emotional video. So I have a bunch of clips which I'll be showing you guys later and I'm sorry if it was it's gonna turn out into some sort of storytelling because that's the only way that the... <laughs> I was looking at the clips, that's the only way for it to be stitched together and, you know, logically. I'll put timestamps as well so you can skip to the parts that you are most interested in. But I made sure to put insights and learnings and maybe things that you can note of in case, you know, something like this happens to you. So first, what happened to Bailey? All throughout her life, Bailey has been sick. Well, sickly in general. and. Her, one of her major issues that we are managing is her gastrointestinal issues, or her hyperacidity and stuff like that. I posted the vlog Wednesday, so two days before, which was around maybe Monday, she started getting an attack with her gastro and vomiting became frequent until the second day or the second night. That's when the symptoms got worse and she's vomiting completely all night and we did not sleep that night <laughs> and so I when I took a nap for uh, for maybe an hour or two when I woke up I woke up to her gagging and then when I looked down all around my room it was filled with vomit from white to yellowish foamy and then gradually plus the solids and eventually towards there it started becoming bloody which was why in the previous vlog I turned it black and white because that bile was already kind of pinkish from the blood and there was a pile towards the other end where it was almost pure blood. So what I learned over time is, you know, for, for dogs like her with conditions like that, of course, it can be a very severe thing as it will lead to many complications that could escalate really fast. Now, what about for healthy dogs? You have to be worried when your dogs vomit more than maybe four to five times you can start getting worried because that's not normal. They can vomit, like I said, you know, vomiting that foamy liquid is normal because it's a sign of an acidic stomach. But usually dogs can handle it because in general, canines have more acidic stomachs than human beings. Which is why, you know, those people who feed raw, there are scientific evidences that they can handle the raw meat because of their stronger acids inside their bodies. In baby's case, from what I understood, from her previous diagnosis, even more so than a regular canine. Her and that her acids in her stomach are maybe three to maybe five times stronger, which is why she cannot handle not having food in her stomach for long. Otherwise her stomach will eat itself. Now, it's also something very scary because you guys have to understand that dogs, when they're sick, they deteriorate really fast. When that happened, that's when I started panicking and that's when I shot that video which you guys saw. The ugliest <laughs> and most raw vlog I ever took. Because it's also a pandemic. You cannot take your dogs right away to the vet if it's a pandemic. You have to make appointments, there are certain protocols, and not all vets take on emergencies like they normally do. So it was Wednesday morning when I took her to the vet. And here are a few clips of what happened that day.
which was actually okay or my vet was telling me it's fine tomorrow's fine to test as well because she has her meds already to you know get her through the day <laughs> it was my sanity and i have a Why? You've experienced it? It's like, yeah. Okay, she's an expert when it comes to sick dogs too. Trust me. She has six of them. <laughs> but anyway, so I had to take her to the vet. And true enough, my friend was right. She tested positive in one blood parasite. So there's a test for blood parasites. There are four in that one test. They test for Ehrlichia, which is the most common blood parasite, followed by anaplasma, and then heartworms. And then I don't know how to pronounce the last one. I will type it up here, something like Babesia, but bottom line, she tested positive for anaplasma, explaining her blood works and the signs of fighting an infection. Although we still have to go back to the vet for some tests because she's still not out of the woods until the vomiting stops. But if I had to sum it all up, I think she's definitely feeling much better. Not 100%, but definitely improved from the last couple of days. Her appetite is slowly coming back, vomiting maybe here and there once or twice a day at most, but that's a significant improvement from before, not to mention she's starting to play as well. She still vomits once in a while, but nothing as severe as before. Also, she has another checkup because they want to rule out gastrointestinal ulceration, but overall, I think the meds that they prescribe now are working well for her. So I hope that this vlog was able to answer some of your questions and maybe help ease your minds a little bit. I know I may have given a scare. Quite frankly, I was really, really scared. <laughs> I thought this was, this was her last life. Because <laughs> Bailey has nine lives, so trust me. This is probably her seventh life. And... I just wanted to thank all of you for all your support, for all your kind words. It meant the world to me, especially that time. 
friends, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. So that's it for now, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!